Okay, so we were talking about the different types of notation that we can use to represent uh, two-dimensional vectors. And the first way is called unit vector notation, where we write, you'll notice there's no arrow hat over a sub x, so that means it's just a scalar. We're just writing the magnitude of the x component of vector a. a sub y is the magnitude of the y component of vector y. And then we put them next to what's called i hat, or the unit vector, and j hat, uh, also a unit vector. And i hat, j hat, and k hat, their only job is to be length one and point in specific directions. So i hat points along the x-axis and has a length of one. j hat points along the y-axis and has a length of one. So when I write five i hat, when I write vector a is equal to 5 i hat, what I'm really saying is take i hat, which is pointing along the x-axis and has a length of 1, multiply it by 5. So stretch that scalar, or sorry, stretch that vector out so it has a length of 5, and that represents vector a. So same thing here, when we have something that says a y times j hat, we're saying take j hat, which points in the y direction, and scale it, make it just as big as the y component of vector a, and that represents the vector. Um, we have another type of notation called engineering notation, which is a compact version of unit vector notation where we write in triangular brackets just the uh, scalars here, AX and AY, and it's understood that this is not a coordinate in like an XY coordinate, a point, it's a vector, and these are the X component and the Y component of the vector. This uh, diagram in your book is explaining something to you um, that's a little bit abstract, so I want to kind of walk you through it. Um, forget all this red stuff at first, okay? Just forget all the red stuff. We have a normal coordinate system. X is horizontal, Y is vertical. We have a vector A here, and we have the X component of A is along the X axis. The Y component of A is along the Y axis. And just kind of reviewing what we said before, we could write this as A, Y, J hat, and we could write this one as a x um, i hat if we wanted. And it would mean the same thing. Okay, now take a look at the red coordinate system. What we've done is we've rotated the original coordinate system by some amount. And this is fine because the coordinate system is an imaginary construct that we're using as humans to understand the system and to communicate to each other about it. So if we take some new coordinate system that's rotated and we take that original vector, vector A, now its X component is here and its Y component is here. So we would have, in this rotated coordinate system, we would have a different x component than we had before, and we would have a different y component than we had before, but when you put them together and write this, which is the sum of this x and this y, they form the same vector a in the same magnitude and the same direction that it was in the original coordinate system. If this is a little bit abstract for you right now, that's fine. Um, it, it's not until um, chapter uh, three or four that we start rotating coordinate systems. So we'll, we'll talk more about this later. So again, just kind of to review uh, the different vector notations, let's say that we have a vector A here, and the vector has this length and that direction. 
If we were to break vector a up into its components, we might find that its x component has a length of 3, and its y component has a length of 4. So the different ways we could write this is we could write three with triangular brackets, just 3 comma 4, and that would mean this vector. Or we could write 3i hat plus 4j hat. That's another way to write it. Just a really quick note, we say hat out loud, but this hat is reserved only for unit vectors, meaning vectors that have a length of one. And this is the, the basic hat that we use for any other vector. And again, if we wanted to find the magnitude of vector A, we would have that the magnitude of vector A or the magnitude of 3i hat plus 4j hat is equal to Pythagorean's theorem of those sides, and we get 5. And we could find the um, angle. This is called the principal angle down here in the corner. We could find the principal angle by doing the arc tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. So that's 4 over 3. That would give us some angle. Okay, so let's uh, do a couple examples just to get used to this. So here we have vector r. Vector r has a magnitude of 175 meters and it points 50 degrees uh, relative to the positive x-axis. So we've got a little diagram here for us. We want to find the x and y components. So again, we can use trig to find the x and y components. We know that the um, adjacent, the cosine of 50 degrees is equal to the adjacent, and I'm going to change the notation here real quick just to match what we've been doing before. So we're going to have rx, the x component of r over r, and if we rearrange that then rx is equal to r times cosine 50 degrees. And same thing down here, we'd have sine 50 degrees is equal to ry over r, and that's going to end up being, um, uh, sorry, r sine 50 degrees. So writing this out, the magnitude of r was 175 meters, so we'd have 175 meters times the cosine of 50 degrees, and we'll calculate that in just a second, and then 175 meters times the sine of 50 degrees. There we go, here's our answers for the x and y components right there. So I'd like for you guys again to pause the video, try these, check your understanding questions, and then look back in the notes to see how you did. Let's uh, review again adding vectors by components. So it's a, it's something that students struggle, struggle with every year. So I wanna just make sure we cover it multiple times in case you uh, are having questions. Okay, so let's say that we've got two vectors, vector A and vector B, and we want to add them together. Remember that we can only add vectors that lie in the same line. Vector A and vector B are both two-dimensional vectors and they're not parallel to each other, so we can't add them directly. So look at what we do. We take vector A and we split it into an X component and a Y component by breaking it down into the two legs of a right triangle. And we take vector B and we break it down into an X component and a Y component, again, by breaking it down into the two legs of a, a right triangle. In this way, the X component of A and the x component of b lie in the same line and we can add them together by using head to tail method. We can just put them next to each other and add their magnitudes. And we can do the same thing with the y components. The y components can be lined up and added directly together. So we get that and look at what happens. We get a large right triangle that shows us the magnitude of 
the x and y components of the result, which we're calling vector c. In this case, vector c is vector a plus vector b. And this is the math we're trying to carry out, is how do we actually calculate um, what vector c is. So this is graphically this process. We're going to break up A into components, break up B into components, add like components, add the X's, add the Y's. Here, the X component of C is the X component of A plus the X component of B. We can see that graphically this is where this came from. Okay. And the x component of y, or sorry, the, the uh, y component of c is the y component of a and the y component of b. So that's graphically what we're about to do. So use this to try not to get lost in the math that we're going to do and all the notation that's about to happen. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take vector a and we break it down into the x component of a times i hat, which is the x direction, and the y component of a times j hat, which is the y direction. We're going to do the same thing for b. Now we can add down the column. So what we're going to do is we're going to add down this column to get those two. And then we're going to add, oops, oh man. Down this column to get these two. Okay, so this first column here is our x components, and those are going to add together to be the x component of C. And this column here, we're adding all the y components, and they're going to add together to be the y component of C. Once we've done that, we can find the magnitude of vector c by using Pythagorean's theorem, and we can find the direction of vector c by using the arctangent. So here's a problem that I'd like for you guys to try based on what we just talked about. I'd like for you to try it out, pause the video, and then when you're done, check back in the notes to see how you did. Okay, so let's try one more example. We'll do example nine, and this is exactly like we were just talking about, except uh, we're going to put some numbers to it and really test it out. So we've got vector A that we're trying to add to vector B to get the result, which is C. So we're going to have vector C is equal to vector A plus vector B. The first thing we're going to do is split vector A into its X and Y components. So this is going to be um, 145 meters. Now let's look at this triangle here. Here's vector A. And here's our two components and the angle they gave us 20 degrees so in this case the y component is the adjacent so we're going to use cosine to find the y component and the uh, x component is opposite so we'll use sine to find that side Let's draw B. Here's B. Here's our components. That's our right triangle. The angle they gave us here is 35 degrees. So it looks like our X component is adjacent. So we're going to do 105 meters adjacent as cosine. So that's going to be cosine 35 degrees. And then the y component is opposite, so that's going to be sine. And we're just about out of time, so you guys will want to go on to the uh, last, the next video, which will be the final video.
we'll finish this example up.